This is a Century Safe Model MS-0100. It's fire resistant and has a dial lock with a million possible combinations. And this is Nathan Seidel. Nathan, are you a safe cracker? Not a safe cracker, but I built a safe cracking robot. Last year, Seidel's wife gave him this already locked safe as a gift. No combination. Weird present, but Seidel loves a good challenge. So she knew I was really into puzzles and locks and robotics, and those three came together, and today we can open safe. Seidel is an engineer who started SparkFun, a small electronics manufacturer. So he decided to build a robot to crack the safe. We found two exploits to take the key set domain from a million possible combinations down to about a thousand combinations. The robot has a dial spinner and a clever arm that tries the door after each new combination. The electronics are controlled by, uh, it's just an Arduino, an Arduino with a shield, and the code kind of reads feedback from the motor, reads all the different inputs. There's a photo gate that tells us where zero is, and there's some analog feedback on the servo so we can tell when the handle has been pulled down and the safe is open. It took a tremendous amount of code, took a lot of electronics, but the 3D printing ended up being sort of the crux piece. But even with his robot trying combinations every 10 seconds, cracking the safe would take almost four months. But Seidel found a few shortcuts, including one meant to stop human safe crackers, the combination dial indents. So they put those indents there to protect against the vulnerability of the safe, and by doing that, they actually introduced a new vulnerability. Seidel took a close look inside another sentry safe he owned, and he found that the space between the notches of the correct combination is ever so slightly smaller about a hundredth of an inch narrower. And it turns out that the skinniest indent is actually the, the last number of the three numbers of the combination. So if we can measure those indents and we can find the skinniest one, then we can find the third number of the combination. So instead of a million combinations, we've now reduced it pretty significantly. So Seidel coded the robot to measure that tiny difference and suddenly had the last digit of the combination. The second exploit that we found is uh, with most safes, uh, there's some manufacturing tolerances. And so on our safe, it turns out that uh, the, the, co it, the combination is actually three digits wide. So if the number is 51, it turns out 50 or 52 will work. So instead of 100 times 100 times 100, it's 33 times 33 times 33. And because we figured out that last digit, it's 33 times 33 times one. So now we're down to about a thousand combinations. The last exploit that we figured out is something we call set testing. Because we have a robot, and robots are really good at knowing where they are, uh, set testing is where it sets the dial to a specific location, tries the combination, and then goes back and adjusts one of the dial, and then goes back and tries the next combination. All that shaved the time down dramatically. Now he can crack the safe in about 15 minutes. While this hack does prove how easy it's becoming to leverage inexpensive open source hardware and code to crack historically dependable analog security systems, Seidel doesn't think anyone with a safe like this should be worried. As open source becomes more prevalent, people are looking into more things. I'm, I'm poking at this safe and I'm sort of saying, hey, I found this thing. Maybe, maybe safe manufacturer, you should know about this so you can make safes better. Uh, that's sort of the mentality of open source. So I think security in general is going to get better the more the community embraces open source because it's not about, hey, check out what I can steal. It's about, hey, I found this thing and I want to share it with you. I want to point out this issue so you can make this more secure. It came from Craigslist and we weren't sure what was inside. Uh, in the end, we got it open, yay, but there was nothing inside. It's always, it's always a gamble. Right? It's always a gamble. Geraldo Rivera would, would agree. Yeah. <laughs>